there! Welcome to Beauty Bee and happy May the 4th! It's Star Wars Day! I love Star Wars. I love Star Wars Day. This is my holiday, especially since Disney purchased the Star Wars IP a few years ago at this point. I think it was in 2012. It's been a while, but I, I love what they've done with it. They've really pushed it. They've made it more part of the public consciousness than it was pre-Disney. I'm really excited. Anyway, before I start raving too much about Star Wars, let's talk about the point of this video. If you've been here before, you likely know that I really enjoy pulling together makeup that I feel should exist. Sometimes that relates to packaging. Sometimes that's color schemes that I would like to see. In this case, it's going to be three sets of Star Wars palettes that I feel ColourPop should put out. To put these together, I did kind of suspect that ColourPop would be releasing a Star Wars collection for May 4th. I mean, I'll just call me psychic or something. It hadn't been announced, the collection had not been revealed. Now that I am filming this, I have actually seen the collection and it's fine. I mean, it's a decent Star Wars collection. I just don't think it's an amazing one. And because I do like Star Wars so much, I have really, really high expectations for ColourPop and their Star Wars releases. So enough rambling. Let's get in to the first set of palettes. These are two five pan palettes. There's one that is themed after Ahsoka Tano. If you are passively familiar with Star Wars from films one through nine, then you are likely not super aware of Ahsoka Tano, but she is a main character in really a lot of the expanded universe material that's come out in the last 15 years or so. She was introduced in the Clone Wars animated series and has shown up as a live action character played by Rosario Dawson in The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. So Katano is a Tabruta, which means that she has an orange, white, and blue complexion. So I decided to pull those colors into her palette. We have a matte orange and a pretty subdued for a blue, blue shimmer. And I think these colors pretty closely match her skin tone. And then building out from that, I wanted basically some neutrals that could work together with a blue and an orange. Two colors that I don't feel by themselves necessarily work all that well. So to do that, I added a light sort of buttercream yellow matte. I thought this bridged the gap between being a neutral shade and being colorful quite nicely. I also thought that you could tone down that orange a little bit using the yellow, just mixing those two shades, I think could give a shade that might be a little bit more approachable for someone like me who doesn't really like orange eyeshadow. And then a deep brown to, well, do all the things that you need a deep matte for you know, put it in your outer corner, line your eyes, use it in your crease if you have a little bit of a deeper skin tone, you know, the usual drill as well as a highlight shade that I feel, again, jives pretty well with both the blue and the orange. The other five pan palette that I pulled together is for Ray, and Ray's the main character of seven eight and nine i don't feel like she needs as much introduction as ahsoka might but this is another five pan palette for ray i decided to go with a quite neutral toned neutral palette i think this suits her as a character quite well she's not super frilly or fussy when it comes to things like makeup i think that it also suits the outfits that she wears in episode 7 in particular very well. I mean, she's from Jakku, she's from this desert planet. Everything she wears in the first film 
is sort of beige out and I think that this color scheme suits that really well. Again, we have two shimmers, one that's a little bit lighter. I wouldn't say it's quite a highlight shade, but I think it would be a really nice inner corner shade. One that's a little bit more of like just an indeterminate sandy color. I feel like you could describe this as a taupe. You could call this a brown. And I think you'd be right either way. And then building that out with three different matte browns that just vary in depth. It's not a super exciting palette. It's not a super groundbreaking palette, but you know what? Ray is not a super exciting or groundbreaking character. So, you know, that's just how it's going to be. I thought it was important when putting these together to actually represent female characters. I think it's ridiculous that ColourPop a makeup company has made three different makeup palettes informed by this franchise but not included any female characters. In fact, they've included two characters whose faces you don't see. Like, you never see, I mean you do see Din Djarin's face, but it is very very rare and his whole thing is that he doesn't take off his mask in front of others. And Darth Vader, yeah, you see his face at the end of episode six, but come on, really, so silly. <laughs> and you know, like in the next breath, I put together two more palettes for male characters that uh, she do show their face, but for whom showing their face is also not a big thing. Also spend a lot of time behind a helmet. So, who am I to judge? Anyway, these are my two favorite characters as of late. Boba Fett and Jango Fett. I decided to stick with the standard ColourPop Star Wars palette of a nine pan that is themed around an individual character. So I call this collection Fet Chance, and there are, of course, two palettes. One that I'm calling Like Father, that's themed around Django. One that I'm calling Like Son, that is themed around Boba. And I stuck largely to the colors that are present in their armor for each of the characters. So Django's palette, I thought was pretty easy to put together. I think that this blue and silver color story is, I think the colors go together nicely. It doesn't take a lot to build from blue and silver to a complete look in my eyes. And I just love silver. I love blue. I love Django Fett. All those things come together and I'm quite happy with this palette. I try to steer clear of colors that were represented in the Mandalorian palette and the Darth Vader palette. Both of those have quite a bit of gray in them, but the grays within the Darth Vader palette skew a little bit further towards taupe. They're almost a warmer take on gray than what's in here. And the ones in the Mandalorian palette tend to be either like a really, really bright silver or again have that kind of actually almost a golden element to them. They're quite interesting shades. They've got a little bit of gold green to them. This, These grays are very silver to blue and I think that makes them a little bit different. I think that makes them a little bit more fun and really they do fit Django a little bit better and his armor than like a true Diet Coke can silver might. So we do have one Diet Coke can silver because I cannot personally resist that color. Boba's palette I thought was a little bit harder to put together because the first couple times I tried I ended up with something that just looked like a Christmas release. Now I don't think that this entirely doesn't look like a Christmas release. I mean I think that's somewhat to be expected with this red and green color scheme that Boba does have painted onto his armor, but 
I think that by deepening up some of the reds into more of a burgundy and adding this lighter pink shade, as well as just choosing like a Kelly green for the greens in this palette rather than like an evergreen shade, I think we're moving a little bit away from a Christmas palette. So this one, I, again, like with Ahsoka, I feel that red and green, while quite striking as a combination, don't necessarily make for a super cohesive, easy to do eye look by themselves. So I wanted to build out the color story with some additional shades. So I added this light rosy take on champagne as well as the pink. I thought that those would be usable quote unquote neutrals for both the red shades and the greens. I also added a gray shade and like a very deep green toned brown. I think that when combined with the red shades, this green toned brown is just going to look like a deep brown. I think that when combined with the greens, it might actually pull to look like a really deep green. But I think either way, again, both of those true neutral shades would work with the reds or the greens. And of course, though I've been talking this whole time about creating looks that mainly use the reds or mainly use the greens, you could mix and match between the two. And that would be quite fun as well. Though again, you might get some questions about why you're wearing Christmas makeup in, you know, June. But who cares? Time's an illusion anyway. This last palette is what I really hope Colourpop was going to do for their May the 4th release. I want them to do something that's a little bit more fun than just putting existing Star Wars art on a palette and, you know, filling out a palette with colors from that artwork. I think that this is a little bit more of a cute, clever, fun take on a collection. And I think that this allows Colourpop to be a little bit self-referential by making another Disney designer collection, but using Padme and Leia. I think this could be really cute. You could have little fashion drawings of these two royal characters. I mean, Padme is a queen at one point. Leia is a princess. Disney princesses are kind of your thing. And they're both fashion icons. I mean, the outfits between Leia and Padme are great. Fabulous. Beautiful. And I wanted to pull from those outfits when I put together this palette. So like the original Disney designer collection that they did with the more standard Disney princesses, this is a 15 pan palette. The left half of the palette really focuses in on Padme's outfits. I love Padme's outfits. I mean, I love Leia's outfits as well. But Leia really has a pretty limited wardrobe in 4, 5, and 6 compared to Padme who has several outfit changes through each of the three films that she appears in. So I will actually just put up the outfits that I took these colors from. I It was kind of strange going through. I didn't really think that Padme suited these colors. I didn't think that these were really the colors that she wore. If you just asked me to grab colors that I thought suited her outfits, it wouldn't be this light. But she really does wear quite a few really light shades and the light shades that she wears are generally my favorite outfits that she wears. So yes, yes she does wear some deeper colors, but these are the ones I like. And I felt that all together, these six shades, along with the three neutrals in the center of the palette, really worked nicely together. 
Leia's side of the palette is a little bit more earth toned. I was looking specifically at her best pin outfit, which is the red high neck sort of jumpsuit with a white cape or robe over, as well as her Endor and the slave girl outfits. And of course, because it's Leia, there's also quite a bit of white. So she gets this really bright iridescent white shade that I love in any form, but in Star Wars form is especially special. And again, I thought that these six shades worked well as a small self-contained palette, but then adding in the three neutrals again, you do get some more versatility. And personally, I wouldn't see myself doing a ton of looks that combined the left and right halves of this palette, but I can definitely see some color combinations in here that would work well and be really pretty. For example, bringing in that yellow from Padme's side of the palette with the olive green from Leia's side. Bringing in the pink and the purple from Padme's side with either of the more reddish shades from Leia's could also be very pretty. And I just want them to do something like this. I want them to do something that's a little bit more fun, a little bit more humorous than just a standard Star Wars collection. I think part of that might just be due to what Disney wants. Of course, Disney's going to have some degree of creative control over their licensing. Looking at the Pat McGrath collection that she did in conjunction with uh, the Rise of Skywalker. I mean, that, much like this ColourPop release, is just copy-pasted promotional images, I think, that Disney probably provided to her. And I just wish that Disney would try something a little more fun, go a little bit further outside their comfort zone. Yeah, there's some risk there, but I think there is a real possibility for some huge rewards. I think they could have a really big hit with something a little bit more fun. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think of these palettes. If you're doing anything for May the 4th, I would love to hear about it. Let's geek out about Star Wars together. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Please consider liking, subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and I hope that I will see you all next time. Bye!